हेलो नमस्ते आदाब आज हमारे साथ है राइटर एंड डायरेक्टर सर्वज्ञ कुमार ही वॉज द डायरेक्टर ऑफ द फिल्म माई डियर दोंगा एंड ही वॉज ऑल्सो अ स्क्रीन राइटर फॉर द रिसेंट फिल्म कल्की तो बोलिए सर्वज्ञ जी कैसे हो आज आप स्मॉल करेक्शन मनाडिशनल डायलॉग राइटर फॉर कल्की ओके स्क्रीन राइटर इज नागेशन गर एंड समर गर ओके ओके इट्स ऑल राइट आई एम सॉरी करेक्टेड हाउ आर यू डूइंग आई एम गुड I'm good. Um, you've got a nice place. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. How did you start into uh, you know films and how did you get into it? So um, basically, I've been a writer for most part of my life. Mm. Um, in my uh, during my B Tech, I had written a few novels. Mm-hmm. And this and that. I wrote something called um, The Army of Saints. Okay. And I mm, did not know how to get it published, or I did not even uh, know know the process behind it. Okay. So I just <clears throat> opened up a website, mm. put up the uh, novel on it, okay. and I asked my college people to kind of promote it. So I got decent reviews on the novel. Mm-hmm. So I thought I should pursue writing something more. and i wrote another novel and then i wrote uh, something called kaliyuk kaliyuk uh, you have i've seen read... it on amazon okay yeah thank you <laughs> so i've written um, a book called kaliyuk the secret plot basically it starts with uh, um the beginning of satya yuga and ends in kaliyuga okay. so the entire four cycle four yuga cycle mm-hmm. it covers based on karmic equation karmic equation okay so most of your writings uh, you are taking inspiration from mythology and uh, puranas yes puranas okay puranas itihases and i like things that are surreal something surreal. that is um beyond human capacity it interests me more than anything so yeah i'm i'm more into fantasy and um, okay um fantasy and purana itihas philosophy and all that okay so yeah. so uh, mostly what kind of genres do you enjoy directing i uh, i personally enjoy comedies comedies um, i aspire to direct something that is in the genre of fantasy or uh, something that is surreal okay um recently i have fallen in love with uh, the thriller and horror uh, horror genre. genre okay no horror because there is this director called mike flanagan mm-hmm. um, in netflix he has a full series uh, flanovers okay so he's probably the best horror director that i have seen okay so his work has kind of inspired me to sometime explore horror, horror. sometime in my career yeah i but otherwise i'm majorly into thrillers and uh, fantasy and comedy and comedy. all comedy I watched my dear Donga and I had fits of laughter. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it is amazing. I mean, I did not expect to relate so much to it. <laughs> I think every almost every modern Indian woman would relate with uh, Shalini's character. Boy problems are universal, no? <laughs> <laughs> not universal. Keep it to yourself. Keep it to yourself. <laughs> yeah. Okay. so sarva usually in you know direction and all uh, there's a lot of uh, there's a process which happens you know i'm aware of the director and the actors there is there, there is involvement of some energy exchange and you try to bring out the best out of each other so what how do you bring the best out of your actors um see it's a mutual job hmm. right uh any good director cannot extract anything if the actor is not talented enough okay and if uh, the ta- the actor is extremely talented and the director does not know what to ask of mm-hmm. the actor then again there is an imbalance yes so it's extremely crucial to get good actors on your team mm-hmm. um because in a while doing my dear donga that was one of the few things that were in my learnings okay so if you don't have a good actor you cannot get out anything mm-hmm. whereas if you have an experienced uh, actor and if you have someone who can add something mm-hmm. to the table who can if you are doing a comedy the actor can they bring in jokes can they bring in that comic timing mm-hmm. 
so to have enough interactions with your actors to have good enough friendship with your actors to have that you know given take if it is on the table then a product would would definitely come out good definitely but if the director is acting as a monarch mm-hmm. and he is saying jo main bataunga that's a rabbit it has only three legs <laughs> now you believe it <laughs> that is going to damage mm-hmm. the product and if <clears throat> the actor is not ready to listen to the director or so even that is going to ruin the project so the only way a director can extract something or anything from his actor is if they are on the same page trying to understand each other's vision because the actors too have vision it's not that mm. um only the director has the vision or the writer has the vision so everybody coming on to the same page and being capable enough to bring something to the table is what is most crucial everyone collectively working towards a common goal yes. brings out the best output yeah. and uh, how do you go about casting it depends for um for our project our actress is the writer okay. for my dear ganga okay. shalini was the writer mm. she was the one who wrote it she was the one who took it to aha she was the one who got the project commissioned mm. and uh, the producers everybody was logged in mm. and then i was hired as a director. director okay so the main casting was done even before i entered the project okay but if tomorrow i write something and i am going to the producers and something gets logged from my end and mm. i have to start looking for actors then i have to see who would fit the roles i have written in my script and who already exists mm-hmm. in the known framework mm-hmm. see known framework not just because they are famous and they can pull in audience okay that's one aspect of it okay two and the more important reason is you would know for sure that the actor is you know well versed with the shots and mm. he's experienced and he could definitely bring something to the table that is what pushes people to cast people who have already had some experience true so going with new actors i think at least the new age filmmakers they are uh, they are looking at new actors um based on the works they have done even in youtube and short films mm. and uh, even theater a few directors go to theaters and uh particularly watch actors how they are performing and if they like something they they get hired i have seen this uh stage play called uh, purusha suktam okay. i worked backstage for it okay um an actor called vamsi chaganti he played the lead role it was written by uh, anchor jansi gar mm-hmm. so the process that went behind it was amazing i i i uh it it's been few years i saw the play in 2019 okay and the way they rehearsed the scenes the way uh, the actor prepared for you know in, the way you act for film is different from the way you act for the stage definitely uh, definitely so what went into the preparation process it it just blew my mind from i think that was one of the uh, important experiences in my career mm-hmm. to understand how to pick an actor to how to read an actor's uh, performance and all that thanks to vamsi gar Okay. and jansi karu so uh from my understanding it's important to read an actor's body language and actor's capabilities and mm-hmm. uh in my dear ganga you saw vishal's character mm-hmm. no yes, yes. so his audition was almost for one and a half hours okay um i don't know why the rest of the people we auditioned for 10 minutes 5 minutes and whatever time we could mm. we just gave uh, gave those actors and we saw their auditions and we sent them off we were not happy with most of the auditions we were happy with a few and then mm-hmm. this guy comes in and um he says i need time and he talks to us he talks about the character he talks about um you know the background of the character okay. he understands the in and out of it and i was wondering why is this guy asking so many questions instead of coming and performing and then he comes in and he gives the performance of his life i was like okay just give us 5 minutes he, he goes out <laughs> and then me shalini the dop and all the people we were like uh, this is something uh, brilliant that we are seeing right now mm-hmm. so maybe we should give him more scenes and we should ask him to perform something else and okay the more inputs we gave the more creative he could get with the character and 
he made us laugh mm-hmm. with the performance he did there okay. in the audition and i think going further as a director it's important for me to study uh, the body language and the inputs that an actor can give and actors take notes <laughs> that would definitely help in casting better mm-hmm. i think yeah okay nowadays there's this new uh, you know wave going on where people are casting actors based on their instagram following rather than their talent or capability like how what do you think is the future of that if actors have to get gigs based on the number of followers they have then that compromises the quality of the craft itself absolutely that is both good and bad mm-hmm. good in terms of pulling a few audience okay bad in terms of getting the right casting for the role mm. if the influencer said influencer is both a good actor and uh, has enough social media presence mm. that's a win win yes but a few tiktok reels go famous and there are a lot of memes around those people and those people get to play roles and those are inserted only to pull in audiences mm. people come they whistle and they leave that's a not exactly a quick buck but then again it helps push the movie uh, forward but at the same time casting a very good actor mm. casting somebody who can bring something excellent to the table that will stay with the audience even when they leave the theaters definitely so one helps to bring the audience in second helps the audience to go to the people again and tell more people about it and bring them back in so there has to be a balance between the both that cannot be avoided mm-hmm. uh, trust me that cannot be avoided okay uh, even in uh, my dear dunga we had to uh, cast a few influencers mm-hmm. we did that yes uh, that was unavoidable uh, but then again shalini although she is a social media influencer she is an excellent performer oh i have seen that yeah. in my dear dunga she she is somebody who can snap into the character and out of it um so that balance was there in my dear ganga somewhere and i feel lucky for it <laughs> lovely so you were the additional dialogue writer for kalki right yes. and now this this ongoing controversy of <laughs> karna and arjuna so karna has been <laughs> depicted okay. in a better light compared to arjuna what's your take on that see navishan gar is he is somebody uh who is very well read who knows what he is doing one thing that people missed i feel i i was at least hoping for some influencer to come out and point out these things that were subtly said in the film without actually saying it okay the guy who actually uh gives those elevations to karna is ashwatthama mm. in mahabharata ashwatthama fights alongside karna and they both are friends and obviously he would say karna is a better fighter than arjuna that's the dialogue coming from ashwatthama okay whereas krishna he does not say karna is a better fighter karna is a greater fighter he warns arjuna do not take him lightly do not take him lightly do not take him lightly this happens even in the original mahabharata maybe not in the way that is been said in the film mm-hmm. but then krishna does warn arjuna not to take not to underestimate your opponent okay. which is a fair thing to do it's not uh, undermining arjuna in any way mm. so when we are dealing with characters like ashwatthama when we are dealing with characters like karna krishna and uh, all these people it is very 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 important to get into those shoes and reimagine how they would speak about the characters that are around them mm. uh so when ashwatthama talks about karna very highly it is because they are very closely associated people and he would definitely speak highly of karna okay but yes. krishna would never do that krishna would yes krishna did not do that in the film mm-hmm. he just says do not undermine your opponent okay maybe not in these exact words but that is what it means so by the end of the day people have misinterpreted it no now. it's not no i'm let me complete this mm-hmm. so the interval shot of the film is where prabhas is holding that wheel and mm-hmm. all that and the hype cosmo hype cosmo between the people were shouting in the theaters and all that but yeah. the philosophy behind it is karna died in the battle of kurukshetra because he could not lift his chariot that got stuck in the yes earth. yes 
due to number of curses and due to number of uh, series of events he had to lose the battle of uh, kurukshetra in the hands of arjuna mm. so why he was although he was son of equal son of kunti if he had revealed it to uh, dharmaraja that he was the son of elder son of kunti mm. dharmaraja would have gone and handed over the kingdom to karna karna definitely at yeah. any given point of time yes. he would have done that because he is dharmaraja yeah he would have stuck to the rules of yes. hereditary and all that so he did not do that karna did not do that mm. he stood on the wrong side of the battle mm. because he is on the adharmic side of the battle he lost his chariot got stuck in the earth mm. now when he is reborn as uh, bhairava in the kalki, film yeah. kalki he lifts the chariot's mm. uh, wheel with his single hand and on the back of the wheel is the image of shri mahavishnu mm. he lost the battle back then because shri mahavishnu was on the other side mm. now he is said to win the battle because shri mahavishnu came on his side so it essentially comes down to it's not about who is the bigger warrior arjuna or karna it's about who is on the side of dharma okay back in kurukshetra arjuna was on the side of dharma so madhava was on the side of arjuna so now the possibility comes if you if, if we used to discuss uh, vedanta yes, a while yes. back and yes um there is this thing janma dukham jaya dukham jara janma dukham jara dukham jaya dukham punah punah okay sansara sagaram dukham tasma jagrata jagrata we actually discussed these lines the birth upbringing the disease and then death these are all repeated life cycles in our philosophy yes why that exists is because of our karmic baggage mm-hmm. so you do something very bad or you have asayat bhadyate loke karmani bahu chintaya ayukshinam na janati tasma jagrata jagrata the more you are attached towards getting certain states of existence uh, the more times you have to take birth again and again to achieve those Mm-hmm. this is in the philosophy of vedanta. sanatana dharma yeah. and vedanta and all that so now karna back then wanted to become a big uh, wanted to have that emperor life wanted to have that uh, royalty and all that because he could not achieve those he wanted to get into uh, he want, he he took the side of uh, duryodhana duryodhana yes right now again being born as bhairava in the film being uh, someone who is living in the streets of kashi he looks up to complex because that's the kind of life he wants mm-hmm. why the entire complex journey exists in the film is to show that true nature of karna mm-hmm. it's not there just to have beautiful scenes in the middle of streets of kashi mm-hmm. so he wanted the same thing in his past life he wants the same thing in this life, in this life well. he chose the wrong side in the past life what would he choose in this life so if he chooses dharma madhava would stay on this his side mm. so that is the philosophy nagashvin garu said in the film mm. and it's not to undermine arjuna or to uh overhype karna he has said a wonderful philosophy through the film uh, kalki uh, trust me when i say this he is very well read he is he knows what he is uh, doing with the characters of mahabharata yeah when do you think we'll have the next part releasing no clue. no clue now gonna no clue. no re- no revealing nothing no i have no clue have i no i clue. really have no clue okay and even if i do i shouldn't talk about it <laughs> okay yeah. how was your experience with kalki mm-hmm. and the process of working with those with that team working with Nagesh Kumaru has been the biggest blessing in my career yeah. because I don't know how much I could actually contribute to what they were doing, but it was more of a learning experience for me. Mm-hmm. Um, and I will uh, share this small experience. With my family. So, Vijay uh, and Bhairava in the spin-off series that is uh, related to Kalki. So we were supposed to write. a few ideas for the episodes and all that so i had written one version of it another person had written another version of it and i was thinking about it and 
my friends are asking to come over and we were discussing all the uh, versions and my version was read, another person's version was read. So there was a third script which we were supposed to read and um, he said, I'll just come back, just read it and I'll come back. So I started reading it. Somehow it felt funny, it was not in lines with what Kalki was. Mm-hmm. I started laughing hysterically. Mm-hmm. Uh, the other person sitting next to me, we both started laughing, reading the lines and all uh, reading the idea basically. So Lagi said, came back and he said, uh, how is it? I said, it's hilarious, it doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, and I uh, read it out loud for him. And he took the sheets, he underlined a few parts, and he said, these things you can use and we do the back. That was my biggest, biggest learning experience in my uh, film career. Mm-hmm. Um, no matter who is giving you inputs, no matter some, he, I asked him this particular question okay, and I, I said that that was a big learning experience for me. Mm-hmm. And he said, he literally said that's a double-ended spot. Once you open the gates, it will be an endless uh, supply of uh, solutions. But then, if you can really pick the good ideas, mm-hmm. that will take your uh, yeah, film to the next level. So, in in Indian terminology, that's called uh, Paramahimsa. <laughs> Something that can pick what is needed and leave out what is uh, not. Yes. So, for me, he is Navishan Paramahimsa <laughs> because he did not have to teach me with words that you because if you are uh, trying to become an aspiring director, if you are aspiring to become a director, mm-hmm. you should present your free mind. I would have left those verbal lessons like mm-hmm. I left most of my verbal lessons. <laughs> But just the way he was, um, I think my character arc began that day as a director. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, more than anything, it was uh, a learning curve for me as a aspiring filmmaker. Okay. Have you had any mentors for direction when you started out? So basically, I started out in a film school, mm-hmm. uh, Ramaji Academy of Film and Television. Okay. I think it's closed now. I'm not sure, but. Mm-hmm. Um, I've had pretty good mentors. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think the most important one of them and the closest to my heart is uh, someone called Steve Dwarf. Mm-hmm. He's right now teaching at, uh, editing in uh, Ramayadu mm-hmm. Film School. Mm-hmm. He had the biggest impact on me as a filmmaker right when I started out. Uh, although he was teaching me editing as a faculty, um, we had lengthy, lengthy discussions on direction, writing, and many things. Mm-hmm. Um, Santosh Pandegar was my uh, direction teacher. Uh, uh, Sri Ram Jarul taught his script writing. Sri Ram Jarul did that. Mm-hmm. So there were um, good, very good experienced uh, faculty in that film school. But even to this day, if I have uh, an association with Sri Gopal and uh, he's one of those people who called me and said, My dear brother is uh, good. To he, he's like, You did a good attempt, but you can do it. <laughs> yeah. Mentors are like that. Yeah. Puts me on top. Uh, and with Kalki, I think I had a very good learning experience with Navishu. Navishu Parmas. Yes. So for writing, what's your process? Uh, where do you take your inspiration from? And if you face any roadblocks or writer's blocks, how do you overcome that? I sit in my own bathroom. Okay. I play something in the Why sit in the hall? I don't know. It, it gives me a sense of uh, surrealism mm-hmm. when I'm writing mm-hmm. something that is in the jungle of fantasy and all. So, yeah, uh, I used to go to solo trips and all those. Uh, Sit somewhere in a certain location for your mm-hmm. inspiration. Um, otherwise, yeah, I do isolate myself and then write multiple mm-hmm. times. I don't um, keep one draft and say this is final. Okay. Um, but writing, rewriting, and rewriting, and rewriting helps you better your script. 
the, the first task is to detach from what you have written. See it as a vomit draft. The mm-hmm. first draft is called vomit draft. Mm-hmm. Because you just puke all the ideas and then you write something. So you refine it to make it better and better and better. And yeah, that's so good. Mm-hmm. How do you detach yourself? I mean, that's your, your work to it. How, how do you? You look at it and go, uh, <laughs> That's step one. <laughs> That's step one. Okay. That's step one. Okay. <laughs> so, um, probably read it as someone who has to invest in that, mm-hmm. put money in that. Uh, ask yourself if you would actually put the amount that you were doing in this content. Since you have written it, you would have a bias towards it. Right? That's exactly what I'm saying. Yeah. Detach from your writer's uh, shoes. And look at it as a as an actor or a producer or um, somebody who has to pick this script, and you will find your flaws if you are unbiased. But if you are like many, I thought this idea to say something and that will give people some sense of does it add to the add up to the uh, series of things or not uh, is what matters. It doesn't matter what you wrote, thinking of what. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I've read that to acquire mastery over any skill, you require to practice that skill for 10,000 hours. Do you think that even applies to direction? You read this on the No. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> um, I don't think, at least in the creative field, somebody can master over their art. It's supposed to be a consistent learning process with every project that you do, you acquire some skill sets and you'll have a lot of learnings, whether you're successful or you're, uh, not, you'll definitely have your learnings. And you take those learnings and continue doing what you're doing until the love for your art stays in you. Would you like to be, I mean, if there was, uh, suppose I want to get into direction, what advice would you give to me? Don't want to get into direction tomorrow. It, it should have been your uh, passion, or it should have some some emotional value to it to your uh, creative process. If you have that, you'll find ways to understand what to do on set, what not to do on set. You will find ways to learn from learning people. You will find ways to uh, meet people who can share their experiences. Mm-hmm. You will definitely find ways to get your own experiences and then get into the game of uh, directing or acting or get into dancing and all this. Yes. So, dancing. See, if I say, what do I do to get into dancing tomorrow? You say, why not? It's a name over. You have to start somewhere. Where you go to a teacher, I mean, you should have that passion to learn dancing and if you learn the basics, the basics will take you to some level and with that you get your uh, Arangetum mm-hmm. and from Arangetum you build your career as a dancer, probably you go to teach, uh, mm-hmm. you go to the level where you can teach people how to dance and all that. You don't dance just to sell some tickets and get an audience and all that. Yeah. You do it because it calls to you, that art form calls to you. If direction does that to you, or if writing does that to you, or if acting does that to you, definitely pursue it. Cinema, if it's not your passion, if cinema wasn't weren't your passion, what would you do? Do you envisage any other kind of life for yourself if you weren't in directing? If I weren't into directing, I'd be a very professional director. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've literally uh, come all in. 2015-16 um, was when I decided I have to stay in this field. Um, since then, I've not had any safe books. I did not do two both travel. That takes a lot of cuts. Uh, I'm all in. It's either do this or do it. And uh, it's another thing. Uh, for a few months, I had to go and assist my family to uh, 
certain buildings which is closed down. Mm -hmm. I regret that because I could have done some project or learned something which I did not know. Mm -hmm. When I first came in, I did all idiotic things. Mm -hmm. I mean, he kept basically a bunch of things. I get salary, I get salary, I get salary. Mm -hmm. But like uh, the person I said, I got the reference to salary. Mm -hmm. He sat me down and he said, the stories that you talk about, the stories that you want to do are something else and what you are doing are something else. So don't go pitching the other kind of subjects which will give you some certain respect when you go on pitch and show these as your uh, stream of work. That's when I stopped even working for Because what we used to do, I used to work for a few YouTube channels. Tomorrow morning, uh, a certain festival is coming up, so we have to write a script based on that. Uh, we have to shoot in a certain location and based on that we used to write a uh, script and go shoot. Which is not ideal for filming. So I I did take wrong steps and I did fall, I did learn from people who cared enough to tell me that you are going in the wrong path, especially because you are picking stories like this. The fantasy genre and something that is surreal and all those. Do you see yourself being a mentor in here? I'm not against it, but I don't think um, I'm just ready for it. What advice would you like to give to any aspirant who wants to enter the field of direction right now? Or anything associated with films, film making? I don't think I'm, I'm big enough to send out and say this. Uh, uh, one thing that really spoils the ecosystem is uh, even my friends, when they go and teach their subjects to certain producers and they come back, being with the food. They are like, you need to start these for the comedy. Why? Why do you have angst against someone who doesn't pick your subject? Mm -hmm. Either try to better your subject or write something that you can go and pitch to the same producer or uh, go about your way to pitch the same subject to someone else if you are confident enough about it. Because this is happening and people come out when they actually do filming and they come to the interviews and say, Yeah, you did it, you always did it, yeah, as if that's a big uh, mistake on their end. Producers have stopped telling directors why their script is being rejected or why they don't want to continue to be quiet. So that's wasting a lot of time for the new promise. Mm -hmm. So if you are holding grudges against people for not picking up your project, maybe you are not supposed to be in creative field. Mm -hmm. That's what Hitler did. People did not take him into art school and he got this work and he became educated. So, yeah. Uh, when I see people being extremely uh, hateful of rejections, you cannot you cannot go to a boxing ring and not expect to get punched in the face. You cannot be a writer and not expect to face rejection. Handling rejection is probably the most beautiful art you can inculcate in yourself. If Consistency, man. Because I tell you how we even got Kalki. I got introduced to Swapna Dutkura to uh, a very close person of mine. Mm -hmm. um, so Swapna Dutkura, I actually tried to pitch my concept in 2018 or 19. And it did not move forward. But then consistently saying that I am still in the industry, I am trying to do this and that. And whatever I did, I tried to send it to the then I sent it to her and um, that consistency and showing your capabilities will someday fetch you something good. So suddenly one day she called me and said, there is a uh, writer, do you, can you do it? I said, yes, I'll do it. So handling rejection with grace would help you go a long way. Like I said, I got Kanki because um, after multiple uh, repeated presence in front of the 
Sakura Shimos. They called me and they said, I think it was, um, it was the assignment said it for me. It just said, um, what would what would uh, the scenario be if Tirumala Temple is the last standing temple uh, and people are coming to attack? Mm -hmm. That's what that was the uh, assignment that I was actually. And I wrote it and I sent it, and I think that's how I got into the project. Um, there are production houses like like MP and Sportmanjana. And there is also another production house called Shodhana. There are many such production houses which are constantly being lookout for fresh talent, fresh set of writers, directors, and audios. Be graceful when you get slapped by a thousand rejections. And if it if that is what it takes, a thousand rejections on your face to get remembered, graceful take those and um, that will save the ecosystem, that will help other people come and, you know, understand why the direct, uh, director or the producer or anybody that is rejecting is rejecting. Mm -hmm. They would also not hesitate because tomorrow when, see, it doesn't matter to them if you make a hit or a flop. If you make a hit, you go out and say, Palana producer rejected my project. If you make a flop, you won't give the money back to the producer who has the Yes. So that duality ruins the ecosystem. So it's better to just keep learning and possibly continue doing what you what you learn. So that being said, um, thank you so much. This message is very impactful. Dealing with rejection is really enough. You to even reject and to have rejection. Thank you for sharing this message with us. It's not a message per se, but something that have uh, something that has bothered me quite much because very close circles around me do that. Mm -hmm. Once I get rejected, they're like I will show this producer somebody. Kuch bhi fark nahi padta hum. Whether you make a hit or a flop, and even if you make a hit, someday you're going to work with them again. Rather than proving anybody, improve yourself. <laughs>